Welcome to Right on the Mark with your host, Mark Young. Today we're going to be talking about March Madness and all the fun and all the good times that we've had. I want to introduce to you my brother, Mike. Say hello, Mike. Hi, Mark and fellow greeters. Welcome, Mike. Thanks for joining my podcast. Uh, Like I said, today we're going to talk about March Madness, where it all began and where it is today and a little bit of in-between stuff. Uh, There's a lot of good times for what I remember, and uh, I always enjoy going down West Virginia to, uh, well, Virginia, I think, is actually where it started uh, back in the uh, mid-80s, I want to say, but I really didn't join until uh, the early 90s, but it was really a good time. I enjoyed the camaraderie and just the general people that we would sit down and have a few drinks with and eat and uh, just reminisce, and, uh, you know, that was before the actual draft, wasn't it? I mean, it used to start... Friday was yeah, that? Yeah, it started Friday night. People talked about basketball all weekend, the ACC tournaments, the Big East oh, tournaments. Yeah. We really uh, enjoyed watching them. We took off work on a Friday. It, games started around 1 o'clock and uh, had some fun with them. Uh, this was before the cabin? The, the cabin you used to go to before? The uh, Fisher's Cabin Friday night? Yeah, well, we did that a couple times. Uh, there was a cabin in West Virginia, but this was down in Virginia where uh, we had some fun. Uh, friends come up from the Richmond area. People come up from uh, the Miami area. Oh, so it was Rocky that came from Richmond. Uh, Rocky, he'd always bring his friend? Rocky had a, he had a lot of friends uh, he would come up uh, with. Uh, there was some... Uh, oh, that was Lupica. No, that was Lupica that would... Uh, yeah, there, there were some college roommates, uh, fraternity brothers. We had 10, 12 people that would come up. We would actually even have some basketball if the weather permitted. Uh, we would be outside playing a little bit of basketball or shooting around. And oh, obviously, it's March Madness. We were talking basketball uh, yeah, for a so whole weekend. Good, so it was good weather, right? So down south... Virginia, you probably had good weather. Uh, it was usually the first or second week of March, just because it was the it was the week before the draft, or week before it actually started. So uh, you'd have your sheets. Uh, I remember there was limited players. You only allowed like what 20, 20 players. We we picked twenty players a piece. Uh, and getting back to the weather, we we have some, had some issues with snow. Uh, we've had a couple snowstorms where we had to cancel the draft and move it a couple days uh, further. Uh, flights were canceled. Things were happening. Uh, people couldn't drive. But uh, you know, driving around the, the Washington D.C. Beltway was a feat all in itself, especially with weather. So getting people to the draft site, we always did it online, or we always did it in person. Uh, yeah, I always remember hearing about that. And uh, you guys used to rotate through the houses. You used to uh, one day would be at your, or one year would be at your house, the next year it'd be at Fisher's house, the next year it'd be at you know uh, Moore's house, Moore Man's house. Yeah, you know, it just always rotated. And uh, I don't think I joined till uh, the early '90s, but I never really joined. I just joined the before party, like the the festivities before, uh, yeah. never during. Yeah, you, you only joined one time. Yeah, one time. And that time. was in West Virginia. We finally allowed him to play. He was <laughs> tagging along for a long time. This was a, this is a great story. And we finally let Mark play. He had his opportunity. He could have researched. Obviously, his research fell a little bit short. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I think I drank a little bit before the festivity started, and uh, that's probably was one of my downfalls. Was I didn't study enough. I didn't study enough. I don't remember what year it was, but as I studied, the font was so small in the booklet. I thought Arizona was Arkansas. Something and I, to yeah, and I can't remember uh, who was better that year. It was either Arkansas and Arizona, and he went through the draft, and he was he was getting a little loud as usual. Um, he was sitting next to another friend uh, on the uh, during the draft, and the chairman of the draft kind of yelled at him a little bit. It wasn't a good thing. It really stressed him out. And the next thing you know, he picked all of Arkansas players. Sure enough, Arizona was ranked number one in the country. He thought he had a great team, but I picked Papa, the Arkansas team. He picked the wrong team. Hence, his last year in the draft. So was he was first. never invited back for the Sunday draft, <laughs> but he was always welcome for Friday and Saturday festivities. Of course. And uh, usually, uh, well, once in a while I'd stay for the Fisher breakfast. That was always good. The Fisher breakfast was uh, monumental. Uh, that was always big. Money they, in the bank. 
food was always good, the camaraderie, and of course, we even had mimosas at times. Oh, yeah. Well, that was a, I thought that was a staple. You always yeah. had a mimosa Saturday, or was that Sunday morning? You know, it's it's a blur right now. <laughs> it, typically on Friday, but no, actually typically on Saturday morning, but sometimes on Sunday because we couldn't get people out of the house. They didn't want to leave. Uh, one of the things I remember is just waking up and bodies everywhere in the house because people partied the night before the draft, and people would just sleep over. If I remember correctly... Uh, well, correct me if I'm wrong, I think somebody slept in a laundry room at one point. Yes, and we uh, we had that. We were kind of worried for him because he slept on the floor. It was, you know, a little cold in West Virginia in March. Uh, so, you know, hey. Forever, he'll be forever yeah. known as Laundry Room Pete, I yes. believe is his name. The laundry Room Pete. Uh, and, and actually, he brought a pencil sharpener, a automatic pencil sharpener to the draft. <laughs> so he just liked to piss, he let, just liked to make people angry. <laughs> he would before he announced his draft pick every round. He would sharpen up his pencil, and everybody would just get a little angry at him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I think a lot of it had to do with the person that brought him to the draft too, Lupica, Mister Know It All. He knew it all. He matter didn't of fact, with that, no. Matter of fact, his original name was David. Who would have thunk? <laughs> Who knows him by David now? Nobody. Thanks to me. Then my brother said he's the mouth. That everybody needs to listen to. Sort of like Mr. Lupica. Lupica, big uh, big sports guy on ESPN. Uh, knew everything. And I'm like, where? This guy sounds familiar. He just talks about everything. He thinks he knows it all. I think shortly Lupica was in charge of the place. We'd have to give him our emails. We'd have to give him everything. So he could set up the online rotisserie that we had. Don't we have an online yeah, it was a yeah. We did a block the brackets. Yeah, we did, we the, did brackets the brackets online. Yeah, he was yeah. in charge of the brackets, uh, but that came later. I think when you first started this, the internet wasn't out there. No, there was definitely no internet when we first started. So that was uh, all paper and pencil. So you're saying that uh, I remember you talking to me off the air about uh, the frat house starting at a frat house. Yeah, it was a bunch of uh, guys that uh, moved to the Washington D.C. area that were from. Uh, Western Pennsylvania, and uh, they were part of a frat a frat house, and they uh, a couple of them lived in one house, and that's where we started the draft. That so, was that was my first uh, draft, anyways. But then it moved on to the infamous Fisher House, the Fisher Townhouse in uh, Virginia was uh, another good all all day experience or all weekend experience. Uh, I don't remember Fisher living in a townhouse in Virginia. Yeah, he was uh he was there for about seven eight years, and we had the draft there probably three three or four of those years, uh, and then it got a little bit too big, and uh, he wound up moving to West Virginia, and wouldn't you know, I followed him to West Virginia. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Those. I are, mean, uh, we. I mean, the only reason I moved to West Virginia was because of this weekend draft that we did. <laughs> Yeah, and subsequently, uh, you just had your uh, NFL draft. Yes, I just had an NFL draft that we did out in Ogilvy, West Virginia. So as you can see, the roots run really deep around here, western Pennsylvania, West Virginia. That's, uh, you know, a tight-knit, I'll say, group of sports people, just basketball, football, even baseball for that matter. I remember uh, you guys going to all the pirate games and uh, going on a boat. Yeah, the cruise ship insanity. We had fun there for a pirate uh, playoff game. Oh, against the Braves. Yes, I, I oh, know, yes, it was. That's a sore subject to bring up for Pirate fans is uh, the Braves. And that was early 90s, I want to say. But every year it was down to those two teams in the playoffs. It just seemed like every year for at least four or five in a row. Can never get over that hump. Could never get over the hump. Had the best players in the league, but for some reason we couldn't beat Smoltz. <laughs> couldn't beat Smoltz and we couldn't beat uh, Sid Bream as soon as he... Uh, as soon as he played for uh, Atlanta. Smoltz, Avery, and uh, I can't even remember who else was on that Brave team. Yeah, well, we had, uh, you know, Pitt had a good team, too. I mean, they had 22-game uh, winner Dougie Drabeck. He was there. They yeah. had uh, Grant, wasn't there? No, that was, no, I was uh, thinking of somebody else. That's not Grant. They had uh, they had their pitchers back then in the 90s. I, I think I was going back to the 70s with the Colby and uh Yeah, and Bruce Grant. Keeson, yeah. Yeah, those guys. But, uh, yeah, so this was kind of a staple. This March Madness, trying to stay on topic here, uh, was kind of a staple. Yeah, I think there was a, Zane, there was a Zane Smith that pitched for him, and it was, uh, we, we made a joke out of it. Dougie, Zaney, then we prayed for Rainey. <laughs> 
<laughs> I do remember that. I do remember our, that. our third, fourth, and fifth pitchers were not very good, so we were <laughs> praying for rainy. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. So true about that. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that was some good times back in too. It didn't always work out, but that uh, was some good times. But you know, this March Madness was something that still goes on today. I can remember just uh, going to our last March Madness in. Uh, this past March, as a matter of fact. And, uh, you know, everyone's getting a little older. Everyone's getting a little grayer or losing a little bit more hair. We don't have the turnouts that we used to have, of course, you know, because uh, people are retired now. Some have uh, moved away to different states. And some just choose not to come because they know of what uh, is just what's expected of them to come. They're just going to have to endure Friday night, Saturday night, and then stay up all day Sunday to draft. Yeah, that's uh, that's kind of tough now. Can Those figure the, we had a lot of fun though for the last twenty five years. Uh, I believe it. And I, I think there's a, uh, from what I understand, there's uh, there's some records out there that I think uh, Fish R used to keep from uh, day one. There's records of how the, many how um, many wins you had, how many you know times you finished in second, how many times you came in third, what your total points were, and what was your motto every year. Your your main goal was to beat someone every year. It didn't matter where you yeah, ended up in the it, ranking. It really didn't matter. Um, the chairman, the chairman uh, Fisher. Uh, as long as I beat him, I didn't care. I didn't care if I won any money. I'll pay my twenty dollars just so for the next year I could tell him that I beat him. Yeah. That's all that mattered. As a matter of fact, that caught on. That's as a matter of fact. Half the draft that was their motto as well. As long just as to they beat could Fisher. beat Fisher. So if you had 10 people and you came in 8th, as long as Fisher was ninth, you were glad. You're happy. Yeah, and one of, one of uh, Fisher's best friends, who was never a participant in the draft, but he came every year like clockwork. Could his name be Rocky? His name was Rocky, and he showed up at noon on Friday. And we could never get him out of the house till Sunday morning. He yeah, would, he would pace. Is this the one who would pace back and forth on a driveway? Until somebody for, showed so, up. Yeah, yeah. I, I do remember a year or two ago where I didn't see him. I came there. I thought something happened to him. I thought maybe, well, Rocky, you know, his ticker was getting bad. He, uh, you know, he had some health issues. And I'm like, what happened to Rocky? Is he not coming? They're like, calm down, Dr. Mark. Uh, well, that's, yeah, that's that's another podcast is Dr. Mark uh, would speak. But uh, yeah, I used to be called Dr. Mark back then. But they tell me, Dr. Mark, calm down, Rocky will show. And I wasn't really sure until halfway through Saturday, he shows up running, running up the driveway. Yeah, but uh, he was a staple with uh, Fish R's March Madness. Uh, that was always a good time waiting for him. You know, and we still had fun. I remember a couple of years, uh, a bunch of us would get together and go to the uh, Pitt, West Virginia basketball game in a van. We would drive up the highway, and who would have thought we would draft players from both teams? <laughs> On the way to the game, drafting players in a van. Drinking beer. Something tells me, well, we did have a, a, a DD back then. We so, did. Yeah. So yeah. We did make a few stops, I remember. Actually, once we wound up in, uh, I think it was Waynesburg, Pennsylvania, before we knew that we passed the Morgantown Arena. <laughs> Oh, that's too funny. But that goes just goes to show you, going to a game, drafting players on the way there and pitching money in just so you could keep it interesting to watch the game. And it was just the camaraderie and talking um, junk on the player, or the, the person that you had more points on. That's it funny. was basically a $5 bet just yeah. to beat your, I can't your even, best friend. I can't even tell you who won that, but I remember Heck the actual no. draft in the van going there, but I can't even tell you who won. I think no. we all sat next to each other, too. We did, yeah. Yeah, there uh, there might have been times we were spread out, but yeah, boy, I tell you, taking that van there, that guy that drove us there, man, God bless him, because he, he put up with a lot of yelling and screaming <laughs> in that van trip, you know, but that was his job. We paid him to drive us. Uh, yeah, that was uh, well worth the money. Whatever Absolutely. it was, $5, it was well Even worth it. Even though it was only a half hour drive, yeah, we had but, a lot of fun. Yeah, but uh, he, uh, he took care of us, so I like to give him a shout out, whatever his name is. Thank you for taking care of us. Shoop. Shoop. I do remember that now. Shoop. I think I used to call him Shoop a loop. Yeah, <laughs> that is, that's true. Uh, but uh, that was some good years back then. And that was all in the span between probably 84 and now. So a lot of stuff happened once, twice, three times a year. You come up just uh, just to do sports-related uh, visits, basically. That's all it was. Luke then, we'd go to the N- then we'd go to the NFL games. Had a lot of fun at the NFL games. Yeah, yeah. There's just a lot of uh, camaraderie. And, uh, you know, 
And this all spanned in this, you know, 20 to 30 years that uh, still happens. We still talk about these times when we get together. You know, things might be a little slower now as we visit each other. You know, the... the we may not stay up as late as we used yeah, to. Yeah, I, I definitely agree to that. You know, I can remember uh, just staying up till 2 in the morning. And I the remember I year, missed one year. There was a year that I missed. And, and it always happens. When you miss a year, it's one of the better years. And my brother, he uh, had to sleep at uh, Fisher's house. Uh, yeah. Because he, he didn't have a place to stay. And uh, That's exactly. I heard that was a pretty good evening as well. Well, yeah, there was a lot I, of activities. Luckily, I wasn't part of that. Yeah, there's a lot of activities going on. A lot of hustle and bustle that year. Uh, but uh, I'll have to say one of the, one of the funner times was uh, going to bed at Fisher's house. I had to share a room with Siggy. <laughs> I'll tell you, his snoring could uh, wake up the dead. A uh, little Ziggy. Yeah, he's a he's fun guy. You know, fun guy. And, uh, you know, he would toss and turn and snore and I couldn't sleep. And then, uh, you know, I had a headache because I was up all day drinking. So I'm looking for a little ibuprofen to take and flipped on my little flip phone at the time, had a light on. And he's like, Dr. Mark. What's the light on for? He thought it was a light on my head like I was performing surgery. I'm like, go back to bed, Ziggy. I'm just looking for an ibuprofen. <laughs> oh, that was some good times, good times. But I think you joined us the next year. Uh, it's probably duly noted. We should note that uh, that was due to uh, your daughter, Raina, in a championship game. Yeah, in a championship so, basketball, high school basketball game. We would get, po we'd get postings every five to ten minutes. They're up ten. They're down five. They're up three. They're down two. They're up one with 30 seconds left. I'm like, anything can happen. Yeah, and we actually, they wound up losing by, I can't remember what the score was, uh, but they did lose that year. It was a couple years in a row she was in that championship game, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, three years in a row. Fortunately for me, uh, the championship games were moved to uh, a different an, or no, an earlier time on Saturday. So, so it was kind of rough for me. I'd have to do these on a, a, a Friday night. And then I'd have to drive to, uh, actually it was in Charleston, West Virginia, which was two hours away, and uh, watch some basketball and come back and participate Saturday night. So what would you say? How many did you... Did you only miss one year? Yeah, I only missed one year. Out of all from those 19, years. From 1986 till present. Till present. You missed one year, which one was... Year. She was a senior? Raina was a senior? No, actually, she was a sophomore that year. Uh, and they made it to the championship. Oh, she didn't right. play her senior year. Right, she, got she had a tour ACL. Yeah, that's right. I do remember that. But uh, those are some good times. Those are some good years, let me tell you, Mike. Those are some good years. Uh, I'd like to find out what happened this year. Who won this year? Well, you know, um, things happen, and uh, who would have thought it? It didn't really matter. All I know is I beat Fisher. That sounds great. <laughs> well, that about wraps it up for this edition of Right on the Mark with your host, Mark Young, and my special guest, Mike. Mike.